From the moment I understood the weakness of my own D20, it disgusted me. I craved the strength and certainty of the D100. Your kind cling to your 20-siders, as if they will not crit fail. One day, the crude plastic polyhedrons that you call dice will roll that ones. And you will beg my kind to save you. But I am already saved. So no shit, there we were. The year was 2016, and my friends and I were loving Dark Heresy 2nd Edition. Now, in my tiny university town, I knew of at least three other groups who played, and obviously I didn't know everyone in the entire town. And anecdotally, I can tell you that quite a few people in town were probably playing, because all three of the comic book stores and every major bookstore in town was perpetually sold out of the entire Warhammer 40,000 role-playing line. But there was a worrying trend going on at the time that no one could really ignore. Whereas the first edition came out with a flurry of expansions, releases, and spin-offs right out of the gates, second edition was launched with a half committed trickle. We received three expansion books over the course of two years, and communications from the developer Fantasy Flight Games were rapidly diminishing. No one was quite certain why at the time. It actually didn't feel feasible that it wasn't financially successful. Plenty of people seemed to be playing, and the physical copies were eternally sold out everywhere. Plus, one of the best works of online fiction, the All Guardsman Party, was ongoing and doing a pretty great job of advertising for Dark Heresy. But then came that fateful update on September 9th of 2016. The system was dead, but it was no fault of the players. We were plenty enthusiastic, we were relatively numerous, and by all anecdotal evidence I can find, we were paying the bills just fine. No, the beloved Warhammer 40,000 TTRPGs had died in corporate backrooms. This was, in retrospect, inevitable. From the very day that Fantasy Flight Games acquired the rights, the seeds had already been sown. We need to rewind back to 2008. But first, some housekeeping. Now, I'm aware that I said in the community post that I was going to be pivoting towards comedy a little bit. Uh, that is probably still coming. However, with the Rogue Trader video doing surprisingly well last week, uh, if I ever want to get the opportunity to talk about my favorite role-playing system, uh, the time's gotta be now. This is the only chance I'm ever going to get to talk about it. So the obvious uh, stick in the mud with my whole premise of this video is that Wrath and Glory exists, and Warhammer 40,000 roleplaying has continued. However, Wrath and Glory is like 95% a complete rewrite and overhaul of the old systems. It doesn't even use the D100 system, so the Warhammer D100 system is basically dead. And Rogue Trader, Dark Hair, only War, Death Watch, Black Crusade, I, I think that's all of them. All those IPs are basically dead. And how and why that happened, that's what we're talking about today. And by the way, when Wrath and Glory came out, it seems like a lot of the old community never updated and either quit the hobby entirely or just stuck with the old games. Uh, I'm currently reading up on Wrath and Glory right now because I'm one of those people who didn't update. So if this video does well enough, I will probably do a video on Wrath and Glory. Finally, if, if you, you crave, crave the strength and certainty of my videos, then please like and subscribe so that your petty flesh does not betray you. Also, I have a Patreon and you can consider donating to that in order to support the channel. Thanks, everybody. Dark Heresy First Edition. A game in which you play as acolytes hunting down demons, aliens, and heretics far beyond your strength to handle, was released in 2008 by Black Industries. This was an arm of Games Workshop that was founded in 2003 to manage RPG products related to properties Games Workshop owned. Unfortunately, Black Industries closed literally two days after Dark Heresy released, after execs decided that the profits were too small, and they opted to sell the rights instead to a third party. They chose the Minnesota-based Fantasy Flight games for the job. Without missing a step, Fantasy Flight picked up the game. 
their printers running hot as they turned out dozens upon dozens of books in the 40k role-playing line. This was a golden age for the hobby, with tons of people picking up copies of the exciting new game. The arrangement between Games Workshop and Fantasy Flight was both lucrative and functional. Games Workshop was a massive old company with gigantic roots and a long legacy. They had the IP, but they didn't quite have the dynamism anymore. Fantasy Flight Games, however, was a hungry little up-and-comer who were grabbing any IPs they could and working their hardest to do right by those lines. If I have perhaps overfixated on the 40k role-playing lines, I apologize. Because the actual truth is that I really can't overstate the dynamism of the FFG Games Workshop partnership. So, so much came from this, and not just the games that I know and love. The community was bombarded with a ton of great GW licensed board games and card games. From the wacky Warhammer Fantasy sports card game, Blood Bowl Team Manager, to the interplanetary war game, Forbidden Stars. But we also saw a ton of high-quality remakes of several of GW's older games, such as Fury of Dracula and Space Hulk. Not to mention the fact that Warhammer Fantasy role-playing got caught up in this whole thing, too. I know absolutely nothing about Warhammer Fantasy role-playing, so I don't really want to speak out of my ass here about if it was more popular back then or if it's more popular now under the new publisher. But if you are in that community, please let us know in the comments how this whole thing looked from your community's perspective. With the success of these games and others, Fantasy Flight Games was beginning to see their star grow ascendant. In addition to securing Warhammer board game rights, they also managed to work out a very similar deal in 2011 to publish Star Wars products, even releasing a Star Wars RPG in 2012, which is still supported to this day. FFG was growing rapidly. And around 2016, a young William SRD even applied to try and get an internship there. Uh, though I didn't get the position. But the rise of FFG was something of a problem for their cooperation with Games Workshop. The deal had been between a megacorp and a small plucky little company to produce board games. But with FFG growing substantially, and now publishing products like X-Wing that were actively competing with Warhammer 40,000 war game products, well, Games Workshop began to change their mood on this whole situation. Games Workshop was now in a position where they were paying their direct rivals to produce games for them. And that just wasn't gonna do. It seemed that FFG could see the writing on the wall in the end, which is why the Dark Heresy support started to crawl, despite the system's apparent success. But then we get to that message in 2016. The partnership between FFG and Games Workshop was over. The entire line of TTRPGs was dead, alongside numerous other games. We'll likely never know exactly what went down, or the specifics of how the partnership soured, but the consensus between most of the community and most of the news sites at the time are all in agreement. The products weren't cancelled for any lack of success or enthusiasm. The 40k TTRPG line died from corporate rivalries. It was a sad way to go. But while official support is dead, there are still a lot of people playing these games with fan-made overhauls replacing official erratas. Because while corporations can strangle products on a whim, they can't stop you from holding on to them. This is my Dark Heresy 2nd Edition book. It's one of my prized possessions. Uh, now, being that these games are completely out of print, if you want to buy a new one on Amazon, it's going to run you several hundred dollars. And there was actually a little quirk with the printing of these books, because the very first printing, which is the one that I have, the covers were famously terrible, and the cover would basically evaporate for most people within several months. I managed to stretch mine out for a few years, actually, but in the end, uh, it was basically... It, something had to be done. And being just how ridiculously overpriced these things are to replace, 
I realized that uh, it was actually just going to be cheaper to go to a bookbinder and have them create a new cover for me. I made sure that when they gave me this book, they gave me the toughest possible material. Uh, something that could hold up when passed roughly across the table and handled consistently with greasy, chip-covered fingers. And what they gave me was basically the same material that they make textbooks out of for small children, because they are not well known for their ability to take care of books. So I'm preparing to keep this thing alive for the long haul. Because systems can't really die in corporate backrooms. That's not a thing. A system is alive as long as we keep it alive. So long as there are copies still circulating, so long as there are PDFs available online, and so long as one DM is able to find a group of chumps willing to play it with them, the system can't be dead. Ironically, the creation of this video has actually gotten me interested in checking out Wrath and Glory, because there's a new Warhammer 40,000 role-playing community, separate from the one that I was part of and am still part of. And the fact that they've gone on with these games and I've not been there to share it with them, it, I don't know, it just doesn't sit right with me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next week.